Now, I've spent an awful long time trying to sort of explore and open up this question of the act of understanding and the instrument we need for it to occur. And the reason I'm doing so, it's particularly with psychotic patients that this personal dimension is absolutely essential. And I was very lucky that early in my psychoanalytic career, I met up with a, a, a patient whom I uh, treated, who taught me this. And I remember she said to me once or twice when I said something, is that what you think or what you've learned to think? And uh, nearly always these patients do differentiate between those two. And sometimes quite type of disturbing reactions are because of uh, they sense that this is not really the product of a, of a, a personal experience. The other thing I think that's uh, important is we see, I mean, in both this case that I mentioned this week, but even more in the case that I mentioned last week, you see the enormous sort of self-destructiveness. And if you remember the woman I spoke about last week who kept sinking uh, knives into her stomach, there's very often also a very large frustration that uh, what's uh, creative inside of the person hasn't been able to develop. The historian Arthur Bryant says, man is by nature a producer or creator as well as a consumer, and unless the instinct to create and produce implanted in him by nature is satisfied, he will to a greater or lesser degree be an unsatisfactory and discontented being. And then he says a bit further on, if man is not given the opportunity to create, he will, in his unconscious frustration, destroy. And I think this is quite often the case. And that's why I've tried to stress, both last week and this week, the need to try and find that which is sort of undeveloped, the creative thing that is sort of looking uh, for... Uh, development and, um, and understanding. So I, I want to just talk a, a, a little bit about um, the destructive elements in the personality. And um, what I want to stress is that uh, there's something, and this goes against the type of view about the death instinct, that the thing in the personality is destructive because it is isolated from other elements in the personality and not in relation to other things in the personality. And I've quite often quoted this uh, statement which comes from Moses de Leon who was a Jewish Kabbalist thinker in the 14th century and he says moral evil and we would call it uh, destructiveness is always either something which becomes separated and isolated or something which enters into a relation for which it is not made. So um, Moses Dodon was saying that the, what is destructive is that it's actually not in relation to other things. And that's why I also think it's tremendously important uh, never ever to use words like envy, greed, jealousy when uh, talking of these things because that immediately indicates, or nearly always, that this is something that should not be there. Whereas what's actually necessary is to try and describe the element that's there. And uh, it's only, as it were, uh, gets the, uh, the taint of envy or greed or jealousy because it's not in relation. And so it's a question of trying to get hold of the actual element and uh, can, and in such a way that it's connected. And as soon as it's connected, it is no longer envy. You might find it becomes respect, for instance, or greed might become uh, admiration. It's, it changes its nature. It's because of its isolated quality within the personality that, that leads it to have that uh, destructive uh, force. It's very, I think, important to get hold of that, that, the, that this sort of isolation. 
And then there is the way in which the, the connecting of the therapist with the patient, if the connection is made in such a way that there isn't any hint of that type of condemnation or disapproval and so on, that then begins to have the effect, it has a transitive effect, so that then the relations within the personality begin to enter into relation with each other. It's like the, the personal relation uh, begins to be mirrored inside by the intrapsychic relation between the parts. So the other thing is if the sort of center, as it were, of the personality has become isolated, it, it is always in a type of passive state. And in the passive state, it affects the way the person sees the world. And I might say, I mean, there are whole theories are governed by this. So, for instance, the psychological type of theory of stimulus-response theory, the, the type of idea that we are conditioned by all the sensations that, that, that uh, come in upon us, that's uh, absolutely what one might call a psychotic... Uh, uh, vision of reality. And there are quite a number of theories that, that carry this type of uh, colouring. And uh, it's therefore necessary to uh, challenge those and, uh, and to realise that the mind does have a formative power, and that's why I stress the need of, uh, of uh, people exercising their own uh, judgement.